What's up, everybody? This is Chris DeVilbis, aka Yogi Chris, PhD, founder of Nine Form Yoga, here from Base One Stoic Temple. And this is Enlightened Masculinity, Red Pill of Masculinity and Relationship. So this episode is called Man is Basically Good. Man and his essence is good. There are some, you know, some people maybe with their uh, wiring fucked up in some way, very rare that their hard wiring is wrong. But uh, anybody with normal hard wiring, whatever, and I'm referring to the nervous system, the brain, and like the actual physical stuff. And even then, it's not saying that they would be uh, bad. But it's just saying some people might, it, it's like, it is a genetic anom anomaly that wouldn't survive in nature or whatever. But other people, normal people, most people, good, the essence. So what happens when you're good is you feel bad when you do bad. When you're good, you feel bad when you do wrong. And so, I mean, uh, to go further into this, I would be teaching essentially my understanding of this book called Introduction to Ethics by L. Ron Hubbard, Science of Survival. And survival, it, it's very, very interesting. And I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go on so, so much right now because I think there are questions along the way. So maybe if there's anybody that has, uh, uh, let me finish this opening statement off, off uh, any feedback and then uh, we'll get to Oracle's thoughts and then TL. And the science of survival. So survival, not in the sense of like how to build a campfire or how to do your taxes or whatever in the technosphere. Survival in the sense that your emotions get in the way of you making survival decisions. Decisions that be better yourself, your condition. And then it goes into all sorts of things. There's all sorts of distinctions. Words, word math, just like fucking precise statements about uh, our impulses to survive, the, our impulses uh, on, on different levels, like our, our individual self, our, our family, our group, our uh, humanity overall. There's different impulses, and there's a survival impulse on each one of these things. How, how I survive is myself and my possessions, not related to anybody else or anything else, just me, how I survive. Then there's the immediate uh, family of me. I chose, I've chosen, you know, and then there's a group that you belong to. And there's lots of overlapping groups and different sizes and whatever, but the, that's a different thing, the survival of your brand. It's like a group or whatever. And then humanity and then animals and the, and the rest. There's other things. There's lots of distinctions, but it's, uh, it's interesting how the language really drives up with energetics. And I, I, my PhD, a lot of it has to do with thermodynamics and like the language of dynamic the dynamics of life and the impulse to survive. These are energy terms, impulse, dynamic. So it makes sense uh, interwoven with the language and how he uses it. It's very, uh, and in combination, very important, this book, Ethics, in combination with Dianetics, is uh, th those two things are like the bread and butter. So this is survival, meaning like you could call it like handling your emotions, understanding emotions, understanding uh, how to... Uh, why moods come over you. Ethics doesn't handle a lot of that, but it, it, uh, it will handle the thing that Chris Cruz just said. So uh, most moodiness is going to come out of Dianetics. You, you'll read that book and you'll understand more. But the part of your moodiness that comes from uh, this thing that you are basically good and you feel bad when you do bad. There's negative feelings we get. We may wake up with them. We may fall asleep with them. We may live with them that we're just carrying because we feel bad about something we've done recently on some little, little, little level. And we've learned to deny that, actually. So we're insensitive to it. We're numb to it a little bit. We're accustomed to a certain level of wrong feeling in us. And uh, so we dip sometimes. So the, the, the wake up, if we miss the, like, the topic that brought this up is there's the, you miss the wake up. Uh, you're out ethics somewhere else, which is what it's called when you're doing something anti-survival. And it's kind of an intrinsic thing, which means it's already built into the statement that you missed your wake up, which is already an anti-survival thing. So that already is your out ethics and you already will feel bad about that. But did you do something out ethics prior to that, that inhibited you waking up? Given that you were, it's not the first time you've ever tried to wake up on something like, you know, there's something you did that lacked preparation for that wake up that would have assured it more, insured it more, both insured it 
There's a lot of words there. Insured ASS, insured ENS, insured INS. They're all kind of the same thing in this sense. But uh, so that's, it, it points to, you know, when you make a mistake like that, it points to something earlier that you made a mistake about that uh, you know, would cause such neglect of your life. Uh, big or small, you know, people make mountains out of molehills in their own nervous system all the time. To someone else, it might not have been that big of an overt. Also to someone else, it might've been a big overt, a big deal. And you just thought it was a little deal. But that's, that's like, you know, this could really open up a lot of conversation about a lot of topics right now. So that's kind of the opening statement uh, about, you know, man is basically good. I'll hand it over to my co-host, Base 3 OC, Oracle Cervantes, and then uh, onwards to, you know, the guests. We got a lot of guests today, so a lot of feedback expected. What's up, Base 3 OC? Nice, nice. Well, uh, speaking of uh, ethics, I mean, I don't have the, the language and, and the intelligence to explain it the way you just did. I think you've uh, covered a lot. And if, uh, for me, I would have to slow it down big time. Uh, and, and the best way I learn is definitely by example of my own life. So, for example, I'll, I'll give you a good, a good example of my ethics. And, and I think that this might help uh, Chris uh, answer his question. Or I might help Chris answer the question. But, for example, when you sent out the invite regarding the, the, the podcast, uh, the, you titled it. In 25 in 35 minutes, uh, with Raul Oracle Cervantes, leader of two IMC bases on on IMC ethics. Now, to me, ethics is 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 taking in data, processing it internally, and understanding the logic and and the feeling of it, whether it sits well with you. That's how I I pretty much discern my ethics now. I, I know I have a lot to go when it comes to reading the book uh, and really understanding all of it, but this is the, the, the basis of it for myself. Now, why do I point that out? Because for me to say I'm the leader of, of two bases, it, it's, it's a very overwhelming statement. It doesn't sit right in my ethics. That's Reason right. being is because it, it, there's, there's a lot of individuals here that contribute to it. And, and being the leader is, is a big, heavy responsibility. Now, I, I can say I take a, a lot of responsibility for sure. Let me, let, me add, let me add an idea here. And I don't mean to offend anybody. Everybody has their special superpower. In the end, everybody that was in the Justice League or Marvel, they were essential for something. The whole universe would be different without them. And there's for every one of them, there's a billion normal people. So everybody that's involved in this stuff is already a superhero. But... Remove most anybody, in fact, remove anybody else, and base two and three wouldn't exist. Remove Oracle, they wouldn't exist. Remove, sorry, remove anybody else individually, and they would still exist. Remove Oracle, they wouldn't exist. Exactly. Yeah. And, and base two and three. So, leader by default in that sense, not each, there's going to be, uh, I can see how the wording was wrong. So, I'm just kind of. Oh, no, no, not at all. It's just, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to a point here. It's like, Okay, so, so internally, I need to check to see if that's an ethical blockage that I'm feeling in my energy. Um, I'm just going to use my, my language for this. Um, hopefully, you guys can catch on to it. But when you read, read something and, and there's some type of blockage either mentally where, where it's hindering you from, from really shining through, like Chris just pointed out, uh, then you, you got to question yourself whether that's your ethics or is that some bullshit uh, idea that, you, that you've adopted somewhere, somewhere along your life. Uh, and if I really want to get deeper into it, it could even be a previous life if you believe in that. And so, you know, wh when I hear that, it, it's a little bit of both for me because ethically wise, I, 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 I couldn't do this without everybody. Like everybody's contributed. Especially, you know, this couldn't have happened without my, uh, just like you pointed out, it, it wouldn't happen without Oracle. It wouldn't have happened without Powerhouse. You see, he, he, he built a lot of what I manage. Like, he brought everything to the table for me. He said, hey, look, this is what I've been working on. This is what I have. I know your, your, uh, your intelligence can contribute to whatever it is I'm doing. Help me out and, and let's figure something out together. And so he, without him doing what he did, 
I wouldn't have been able to have the ability to do what I do. And so my ethically, I, that's how I discern my ethics is like, I have to give credit where credit is due. Right. And then also identifying if I've adopted an idea from some dumb person or event. And so uh, it aligns with what uh, Chris is saying or asking is you can, you can definitely come to the conclusion that if, if you don't hit your wake up call is probably because you are violating either an, some, something ethically within you because uh, otherwise uh, you'd be more focused and more in present time. That's what I have to say about that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Man. And it really comes down to uh, appreciating that or uh, in itself, the wake up. Uh, you know, there's a lot of success you can have. You know, I'm reminded that there's a, there's a, a when I was wrestling, you could make weight, not eating the most healthy things, the most nutritious things that would give you the energy and the strength or whatever. Uh, you could still make your weight. You could still perform. You might even succeed. But at the highest, highest levels, that's going to fall short of the person not doing that. And, uh, you know, you can get far not making your wake up, but not understanding why you're not making your wake up is you're blind to certain areas in your mind and your life. Uh, that's just what this is. The, pro the process is this. This is the process. Because when we're in the feeling, a lot of times we don't notice the feeling. We just kind of are the feeling. So we don't notice that we've done something or which could be also we didn't do something uh, that uh, we feel bad about. We don't, we're, we're not catching it soon enough. We don't have, and so it's not that you're uh, intending to be unethical or out ethics. Uh, you're probably intending to be good. And you're just not understanding that you're, there is. Arslan, I'm gonna kick you off, mute. Um, not understanding that motions inside, there's a difference between the majority of them, which are bullshit, and the sum of them, or the, the some perspective on them that is pointing to something that needs to be communicated or faced in you. Very, even very small things to a sensitive level. Uh, and seeing that so you catch it sooner because they stack up and then it becomes very difficult to, to see them and there, there ends up having to be like a big release or a big episode or a big event or something. Uh, and it's called stacking withhold. So you got something to say. You got you to say something. Okay. Or you said something wrong, so you got to say something to fix it. Which happened, you know, it's frustrating. It's humbling. Maybe, maybe feeling, you know, it's interesting how humbling sim is similar to humiliating. Hum, hum. Yo, you had your hand raised, brother. What's up? Yeah. Um, long rip later, here comes the wisdom of the ages from the deep ganja wizard himself. Dude, you're making me want to take another hit right now, but I'm going to hold back. I'm going to yeah. hold back. And yeah. I want to, because I love this wisdom. topic. Yeah, I love this topic. And I wanted to ask you, Yogi Chris, um, whenever you were first introduced to the idea of ethics and you applied it in your life, what was the, what's the biggest difference like in the manifestations in your life, just like through relationships and the way you feel about yourself and the way you relate to the world, like what's the difference? What happens whenever you apply ethics to somebody who's never heard of ethics before now? Here's an easy application of ethics and then you'll see, I think, and it's not that this, this example isn't necessarily given in the book and 
There's probably even better examples, but here's just one application. And it's a kind of a self-help application. You've probably heard this example before where it's kind of like the difference between uh, uh, being in a complain mindset versus a solution mindset. And so when you're looking for what do I have control over here that I can take responsibility for, that's applying ethics. You're taking responsibility for the condition instead of sitting back and complaining about it. What a waste of time as a spirit. So my question to that would be, is ethics simplified? Is it your relationship to survival? Not what feels right and wrong, but what you know is the best survival for at first you, then your relationships, and then the group dynamic. Um, so Yeah, yeah, I get it. Good what you're saying, that's getting closer to, um, it is, uh, yes, ethics is a personal thing. You don't, you didn't invent them from zero. You adopted most of them from the morals of your groups and things. And you've maybe determined a bunch of things for yourself. Uh, that is your personal ethical code. Ethics as a science of survival is on a gradient, this is things he explains, but we can think of it as uh, there's always a better, there's always a better option until infinity, which is immortality. The worstest option is dying. So that's the scale. And so if there's a better way to do things, so being, you know, uh, sorry, I kind of lost the gist of what you had said, uh, applying it ethical, responsibility, uh, your relationship to, okay, yes. Uh, you know, I think what you described is personal ethics simplified, but ethics as like a word or a thing is a, uh, you know, I could be over here and describe thermodynamics and energy in a way that doesn't use their jargon, their words, second law of thermodynamics, entropy, Kelvin, absolute zero, blah, blah, blah. These, these are words that are, but if I can describe it in maybe um, just my, like my, my un, un uh, indoctrinated perception of what is happening, that would still be thermodynamics, but then there's a science that a lot of people contributed to and worked it out and disproved about each other and it has to kind of make sense for a big scope of things. And so that's like the language of energy transfer and movement. So ethics here is like the science of what everybody already has, which is some sort of ethics, some uh, code, uh, it, they're probably unaware of most of it. We're unaware of most of it until someone asks us. We don't think about it really. And, um, you know, so simplified, I think ethics is the science of survival. I, I don't know if I was going to say a different way or what is the science of survival simplified is like, you know, the, uh, um, is the relationship of, uh, uh, mm, I would just throw a bunch of words out. Like the, relationship of emotions, uh, the, es uh, the essence of man, and... Uh, so would you say I, it relates um, <laughs> like to the emotional aspect, it's still survival because if you can master your emotions, you, you won't react in a way that's anti-survival? Interesting. You, because... It may not be healthy to not feel when you should feel. And so we think that mastering emotion would be like no perturbation or something. Really mastering the emotion, I think, is more along the lines of uh, finding the proper communication and the expression of that feeling that resolves the, the, the problem. The emotion is, is because of some problem, perceived problem. It may not be a real problem, or maybe it's supposed to be if it, if it was a real a healthy situation, the emotions because of something, or it could be a good emotion and we're not trying to solve it. But, um, 
So it, it, uh, can I go off of that? Huh? Can I just off of what you're saying off of that? Yeah. Um, is it fair to say that true mastery of your emotions is to not deny them, but to actually get to the root of it because the true expression of it would lead to survival because at our base, like we're good. He sort of, the um, yeah, there's a lot of idealism in that. So the, like at the base, we're good. Yes. Emotions are so much a result of uh, the mind and perceptions and wrong perceptions, really. Uh, a lot of the withholds that people will stack have to do with um, feeling bad about a thought they have or, uh, you know, so much to do with words and communication that don't have a lot of physical manifestation. It's just like something said or something heard and didn't defend it or, uh, you know, said something a little bit out of anger and then regretting it later and, you know, not resolving it because it's okay. Like those things will stack and then it'll become like something bigger. Um, so the emotion, I, you know, the mastery of the emotions, I think, it puts such an emphasis on this thing of emotions. I think there is mastery of emotions. Um, and I think it, you know, I'm kind of lost in the question. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's okay. It's, there's good questions. Um, you know, I'm working through it. Uh, maybe if you could repeat it. Yeah. So, um, uh, just uh, me, if I'm following what you're saying, logically, what I'm picking up is if we were to ethically handle or understand our emotions, then we're able to interact with our fellow man in the proper way because we're not reacting to our emotions. We understand where it is where coming from, like we can see the root of what's happening. Um, and so because of that, we're tapping into a higher level of survival because at our root, we're good. I think that's what I was trying to lay out. I think I'm trying to sense. simplify it for myself. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. You say, you said a lot of ideas and I think I, I see why I got lost answering it. Um, it makes sense what you're saying. Uh, you know, I think, um, the, the one thing that is, I, there's some gaps. And so, you know, mastery of your emotions doesn't necessarily entail mastery of communication. You know, to handle your environment, handle situations and handle miscommunications requires a skill of communication. It's not enough. Jesus. Uh, I'm not going to answer because we're about to end. You can call someone. Um, so uh, as a skill of communication, but if you're in tune with your emotion and your body and you can sense when something's off and your willingness to keep solving it, I think you'll eventually sh sharpen your skill of communication to a point where you'll get there. If you're clean uh, in the sense that, you know, you're not hiding uh, some agenda or any malicious intent, uh, like there's good intent, the willingness to improve, you will improve with that willingness, uh, you know, with, with the goodness. Um, and yeah, I could, yeah, mastery of emotions. I guess it's that, that wording is kind of so mythologized, you know, I think a mastery of emotions has so much to do with just the wisdom of cause and effect. And what will happen if you lose your cool? When you see what will happen when you lose your cool in a situation, you don't want to lose your cool. It's when, it's when like somehow you think that that's going to solve it somehow. But why you think that has to do so much with the mind and being stimulated and where, because that decision is not really super rational. It's coming out of as a reaction. And, uh, you know, so the ethics uh, may not be the highest survival in that moment, but it was survival when you learned that behavior because you survived that, be that situation. So you took on the behavior. It was survival for the moment, but it's out of context. Life moves on. This is different. And, you know, we move forward, we outgrow our, our environment. And so it's, it's uh, outdated, outmoded, old fashioned, wrong, wrong for the times. Um, some things are timeless, like that's pretty cool. 
it's pretty cool when it when it penetrates through time everything else is all changing but it's still true this truth still makes sense so i did my best with that one this is a struggle to, you know i, I would i would uh, totally read through notes i'd love to do that uh anybody else we got to end it last uh last thing from base 3oc and uh txl Okay, so I guess I'll go since then nobody has questions. Yes, yeah, you, you. All right, so yeah, uh, so I think ultimately, I mean, it's a very complicated subject for sure. I see it as ethics being that code that really moves evolution forward. Uh, because there, there's so many things happening at the same time in which the ethics have to adjust to, to like how Yogi Chris just said, the times. And sometimes that does mean the death of something in order for it to continue on for the better of, of, of evolution. And uh, I mean, ultimately, I think that's that's what I, that's how I use my ethics. Um, I'm, I'm nowhere near the intelligence that it takes to, to be able to understand or control any of that. But what I do know is that when when I or the way I operate within my ethics is making the right decision that best fits the evolution of every individual that I'm involved with or that I'm interacting with. And that's that how he defines it too. For the, win -win. Like the, the best for the best for the most dynamics or the best for the most you know variables considered kind of thing. Exactly. Uh, because yes. somebody may lose when everybody else wins kind of thing, but it, you know, so that's like a leadership, you know, that's why to, to make it from zero to hero from, you know, the hood to president or whatever, like ideally in an ideal sense that it would take higher and higher ethics to move up the pyramid, take more responsibility for more people because your decisions affect more. And so you have to deal with that as a good person. You'll deal with negative feelings if, if somebody gets hurt from your decision kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that, that's exactly how I operated. I, I don't know how I know what I know, but uh, it's just, I just look for the win-win for everyone. And that's, oh yeah, that's ethics for me. That's, yeah, that's some personal ethics. That's a high survival thing, you know? And so we, so I think, I, in my opinion, I've read it in books that also say something similar for that. And those books are famous. And so it seems to work, right? I, I can't, so uh, just the guys that uh, already spoke, Arslan. So uh, maybe next time, TXL and Chris Cruz, anything? I unmuted, but you know, oh, cool. at, at the root of it, uh, like I think what I want to understand and apply for myself is what is the best thing for me and everyone involved? Because there's a lot of me that goes into my perception and conception of what other people need. You know what I'm saying? Like I, me personally, I can see that whether it's my ego or just my perspective, there's a lot, a lot of me that goes into viewing that. So I don't know if there's like some light you could shed on that, Yogi Chris or um, Raul. Anybody? When you say that? there's a lot of you that goes into viewing that. What do you mean? Like you take it very personal. And I think I have a lot of past um, experiences that influence my current perception that I'm not aware of. Like, okay. and that's just me being. Yeah, I agree. Real. So, yeah. so then. So I, I'm I'm trying to see what the best mm. step forward would be. You know, like, is it an absolute killing of my ego? Or is that a selfish act in it? Like, like that puts emphasis on the ego. I think just drop it. It's not, you got to do something to it or you're supposed to do nothing to it and forget the ego. Just, nice. uh, you know, I think reading uh, ethics, uh, I think um, journaling is very helpful, especially if you feel bad about something. And, uh, you know, just, okay. So as a journaling process, you can write about like where you think you've done somebody wrong. Or, the, or where you think you should have told somebody something. And that you'll feel better. And then you'll see clear more clearly your environment. Like you were saying, you're in your head about it. 
versus getting in the environment about it. Your mind is between you and your environment. And uh, we, ideally you'd like it to be less so you see it more clearly, like, you know, but it's there. You've got a lot of images stuck in your head uh, that, you know, releasing, I mean, there's, a, there's like everything we're teaching, you know, relaxation is so important, uh, you know, breathing and, uh, you know, priming the body in the morning, all these things will play together. Uh, and the evolution is very real, slow while you're doing it. But, uh, you know, over time you make big leaps and, uh, you know, really climb ahead in this thing. So I think, you know, reading the science of it and, um, you know, learning to more quickly catch when your mind is fucking with you and intervening in whatever ways take a walk outside or something. But you guys got to catch it sooner because you get going on the wrong direction for too long. And you got to correct all that before you can even catch back up where you were. So the sooner, the better. Uh, okay. Uh, Oracle, anything on that? And then we end. Yeah, um, I want to just quickly say, I think logic, logic is, is, is the, your best friend here. And understanding that whatever's fucking with you is to be analyzed and using your logic to, to determine whether it's some BS idea that, that you have adopted from a previous experience versus uh, an actual ethical decision that's messing with you. That's pretty much exactly what the book says. If you ever read the book, Oracle, you're probably going to be like, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. So also shout out anybody uh, that's not signed up for the gatherings, the gathering lectures about to happen. This is the Freedom Gathering, April 22nd, 23rd, 24th with private party on the 24th. You want to be there. There's one spot left. It's going to be 10 girls, private venue, AZD teaching, uh, you know, social media game, how to improve your social media with game. And it's going to be really incredible. You're going to learn how to take photos, be around your brothers pre-party before it at the club with a DJ there. So lots of game opportunities. I mean, it's an incredible weekend. The value is just like tremendous. It's like worth three or four times what we charge. So go to imcbase1.com to check it out. And uh, TL, shout out to TL posting these episodes. So click the genius link right there and leave us a review on the show. Leave a comment, leave us all the stars. We're on every app and I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks Oracle for showing up and TL and Chris Cruz for contributing and everybody else for being here live.